So in the last video, we talked about the infinite potential well and the solutions to the Schrodinger equation for an electron trapped in it. And that was the model that we're using for our uh, slab of semiconductor. Um, so that's, that's sort of our starting point. Now, I said in the first video that the whole point of all of this, at least the, the first point of this, is to figure out how many charge carriers do we have? And we're going to use, or we've been using, quantum mechanics to figure that out. And so the ultimate, uh, the, the culmination of everything is we're going to perform an integral. So what we're going to integrate is we're going to integrate the density of states, uh, or G of E, multiplied by the probability uh, that one of those states is occupied, all as a function of energy. So if you've never dealt with quantum mechanics before, this might seem a little weird, um, but the basic idea is that quantum systems have specific discrete states. So we saw in the last video that the energy uh, for this electron could only take discrete states. It could only take states for integer values of n. And similarly, for any quantum system, it's got a set of discrete states. And so those states have a certain density uh, as a function of energy. So at one energy, we might have a density of say five states per electron volt. At another energy, we have a density of 5,000 states per electron volt. And so we want the density of states as a function of energy. And then we want the probability that the state is occupied. And if we have those two pieces of information, the density of states and the probability that those states are occupied, then if we integrate that over the entire energy, whatever that is for our system, then we can figure out the total number of electrons that we have available n. And so this video is going to focus on finding the density of states or an expression for the density of states, g of e. Or you can rewrite that as the total number of states uh, divided by the total volume of the semiconductor. So we want to count uh, the total number of states. And it's easier to start by counting more familiar objects. So let's, uh, let's count apples. Uh, I bet that's something you never thought you would see in a semiconductor physics video. Uh, so let's say we have four apples in a line. And we want to count them. And we don't just want to we don't just want to count them in a normal way. We want to we want to come up with some more creative ways of counting them that might be applicable to semiconductors. So we could count the we could just in this example we could just count the number of apples. Well, there's one, two, three, four apples. Uh, so there's four total apples. Well, that was a little easy. So uh, instead of just a line of apples, let's say we have a volume of apples. And actually, I'm going to draw these apples just like little circles uh, to make this to make my life easier in, in drawing them. So we've got a certain coordinate system and we've got a bunch of bunch of apples in that coordinate system and they're going off in all three dimensions. And so I've, I've done the best I can here to draw them in a three dimensional kind of way. Let's say the distance between them is always a. So in, in each dimension, the distance between them is a. So if we want to count the total, num the total number of apples uh, in a certain volume, we could still do it. Uh, we could still say, well, uh, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. But that becomes pretty unwieldy pretty quickly. Uh, what it's much more convenient to do is just take the total volume that we're interested in, v, and divide by the volume density of apples, or the number of apples per volume. And we can count the number of apples per volume. So we can say that, well, since each of these apples is separated by from its neighbor by a distance a, then we can just draw a cube around one of these apples. Uh, of side length a, 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 a. 
and say that the volume density of a single apple is just one apple divided by a cubed volume. Uh, or you could count up two apples or 10 apples. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you did it. Or if you wanted to get really fancy, you could say, well, since I've got eight apples on the, each, uh, each is on the corner of a, of a box, and we want to take, we want our distance to go from each apple to each other apple, and we're cutting into one eighth of the apple, then the density of apples per each, each one of these boxes is just one eighth times eight, or this is A, uh, or one apple per A cubed of area. Uh, it'll, it'll work either way. So that's how we how we'll calculate the total number of apples in a certain volume. And let's uh, let's be a little convoluted and let's say that we want the total number of apples in a volume of a spherical shell. So let's say we want a thin volume with the total number of apples in a thin spherical shell. And I've just drawn an eighth of that spherical shell here, but we're going to assume that it's the it's the total spherical shell that we're interested in. All right, actually, let's not do that. Let's just let's just say we want one eighth, uh, one eighth of the spherical shell, just so we we correspond with the drawing more easily. Well, uh, we can say that this spherical shell is at a distance r away from the origin. So the total volume that we're interested in is uh, if you've never seen this, the volume for a spherical shell, let's say this is delta r is approximately uh, four pi r squared times delta r, uh, or the Jacobian in calculus is four pi r squared dr, but that's, that's not what we're worried about here. So that's that's the volume of our apples, of the, the total volume enclosed by our spherical shell that contains apples that we're interested in. And then if we want the total number of apples, we just divide the volume of apples by the volume per apple, uh, since this was the one apple per a cubed volume, it's a cubed volume per one apple, uh, or the total number of apples is just four pi r squared delta r divided by a cubed, and that's just from a simple units analysis is volume divided by volume per apple. And that's that's just where the where the a cubed comes from instead of one over a cubed. And so that gives us the total number of apples within a certain volume. Cool. That's that's what we set out to do. And why it's a spherical shell instead of a cube or something more obvious, uh, I'll I'll try to I'll try to explain in the next part of this video. So now going back to quantum mechanics, remember that the last video for uh, a potential well, an infinite potential well, we said that k was equal to pi over l times some integer. That was the condition that had to be satisfied for our wave equation. Well, if we want the total number of, of states that's possible, it's just each state corresponds to one value of n, or k1 can equal pi equals pi over l, k2 equals pi over l times 2. And maybe you're starting to see where I'm going with this, but we can draw out the states uh, on a line. So we can say, well, this is uh, n equals 0, this is n equals 1, this is n equals 2, and the distance, uh, distance between these states is just pi over l. Right, uh, that you, you might say, well, why would you why would you do that? That's that's ridiculous. Uh, well, I can extend this into three dimensions. So if we don't just have a one dimensional solid, but we have a three dimensional solid, instead of just having k, we have kx, ky, and kz, and they're each independently determined by their own their own index. And in each direction, so the solution is basically the same as for a one-dimensional solid. In each direction, the distance between the states is pi over L. So if we want the total number of states in a volume, volume, uh, in K space, 
then we can just say, well, the, the total number of states, we know, we know the, the formula for a spherical shell, if we so choose to use if we if we chose to use a spherical shell, which we will, and the reason for that will will become obvious in a minute, then the total number of states is just four pi k squared, uh, where the distance from the center to the radius is just k squared, uh, and k squared is just k x squared plus k y squared plus k z squared. It's just the that's the it's the radial distance instead of the Cartesian distance times delta k. So instead of r, because we're in k space, we have delta k. And the, the analogy really is one-to-one -one here. It's not, I'm, I'm not doing anything uh, illegal. Uh, divided by the volume per state, or pi over l cubed. That's the total number of states in a certain volume in k space. And that's uh, perhaps a little bit of a weird result, and you're probably not sure what exactly to do with it next. Uh, but in the next video, I'm going to go over how do we change this rather than n being a function of k. We want the total number of states to be a function of energy. And rather than the total number, uh, we want it to be the number per volume. So we want it to be uh, a density. And I'll go over how to do that all in the next video.